Hello, welcome to Reso Coder. In this video, we are gonna add a local multiplayer to our air hockey game. Until now, we've been able to play with an AI. But that is not enough, because what if we want to have two players playing on the same device? Currently, it's just not possible. And we are about to change that very soon. First up, we should rename some things for a bit. For example, we have AI Blue over here. But now this game object is not gonna be controlled only by the AI. It's also gonna be controlled by other player. So we need to change this to player blue instead of AI blue. Also under BG, barrier, we have AI boundary holder. And we should change this to player blue boundary holder. And we also have a player boundary holder. And we should change this to player red boundary holder. So that we know which player this belongs to. And we don't actually need to change this AI puck boundary holder because this boundary holder for the puck is only used by the AI. So there is no need to change that because even now the name reflects its purpose. Alright, now that we have that we can add a player movement script to player blue. So we are just gonna select player movement script and drag it over to player blue game object. We should also set up its boundary holder down here and it's gonna be player blue boundary holder. But we cannot possibly control multiple players yet because we are still developing for Windows, Mac and Linux and we are using mouse as the input device. We need to switch to Android. So go to file, build settings, select Android and we are gonna select switch platform. In order to test touch input in Unity Editor, we need to connect Unity Remote. That is an app that you can download from Google Play and the link is in the video description. In order for the app to be able to connect to Unity Editor, we need to do a little bit of setup. We want to go to Edit, Project Settings, Editor and here inside the inspector you can see Unity Remote. We want to select device to be any Android device. And the rest can stay just as it is now. Now you want to connect your phone to your PC and restart the Unity Editor. Once you've done that you can launch the game inside the editor and it's gonna appear on your device. We can control one player really nicely and we can play with the AI. Which is completely cool. But when we stop playing and go to player blue and disable AI script and enable only player movement script and when we launch the game again we can now control even the player blue and we can control player red in the same game but when we try to control both of the players at the same time see what happens i try to click on the player blue but the game completely messes up right the player red is jumping all over the place because it tries to go to the touch location of my touch which happens to be just where the player blue is located. This means that we cannot control two players at the same time. That's because we are using a mouse press as an input. We can solve this by making our players lock onto a certain touch which happened on the screen. And if a new touch happens, they are not gonna care as long as the original finger which started their movement is still touching the screen. For this, we need to change the way we are dealing with input altogether. We will have one script to control both players by handling the input. The current player movement script, which is located on the game objects here, for example, will be only given a position where the particular player should move. This approach is very flexible in that we can add even more than two players and everything will just automatically work, which is totally cool. Let's add that new script for handling the input. We are gonna call it player controller create c -sharp script player controller and we want to open it up in visual studio we can get rid of this start method and we want to add public list this list is gonna hold instances of player movement script so player movement in these angle brackets the list is gonna be called players and it's gonna be equal to new list player movement inside the update method we want to create a for loop so for int i equals zero i is less than input dot touch count input dot touch count is the number of touches that are currently happening on the screen so basically this for loop is gonna run once for every touch and we also want to increment i inside this loop we want to create a vector to touch world position 
or pass for short, and this is gonna be equal to position of the touch converted to world coordinates. And the conversion to world coordinates is gonna happen in the same way as in player movement script, where we are converting the position of the mouse. So we can basically just copy this line of code, which calls camera main screen to world point, and we wanna go to player controller and paste this in here, but we are not gonna use the input.mouse position, but rather input.getTouch. The index is i, which we get from this iteration variable in this for loop, and we wanna get the position of the touch. After we have this position, we wanna move each player, which is contained inside this list of players. For this, we are gonna create a for each loop, so for each var player in players, and now I have noticed that I should probably rename this to players and not only player, because this is gonna obviously refer to multiple players which are in the list. Now two curly braces after this for each, and in this loop we are gonna check if the player is already touched by some finger, and if he is, we are gonna move it. If he isn't, and the current touch is happening right on top of the player, we are gonna lock the player so that he responds only to the touch that is currently happening inside of it until that touch ends. For that to be possible, we need to heavily modify player movement script. Inside here, we wanna create a new method, move to position. This is gonna be public void, move to position, and it's gonna accept one argument, vector to position. And inside this method, we want to do the same thing which is happening inside this if statement, so we just want to copy the contents of it and paste them into this method. We obviously cannot use mouse pass here, but we are gonna use position instead of it. Now we can basically get rid of the whole update method. Up here, we can also get rid of bool can move and was just clicked. We also want to make this player collider public. And it's also gonna be a property with public getter and private setter. So curly braces, get and private set. We wanna correct the error here. So change the P to be capital. We wanna add public player controller controller. And this player controller is the script that we have added in this tutorial. And we also wanna add one last thing, the locked finger ID, which is the ID of the touch to which this game object is gonna respond when it moves on the screen. So public int and now question mark, which makes this a nullable int. And as you may know, integers are value types and value types cannot be set to null. On the other hand, reference types, which are classes and not structures like for example boundary, these classes can be set to be null. But what happens when we want to set integers to be null? Well, that's when we have to use nullable integers. A nullable integer is signified by this question mark. And that's basically all that you need to know about it. If you want to learn c -sharp programming in depth, I really recommend you to check out my series called Learn c -sharp. And this nullable int is gonna be called locked finger ID, and it's gonna be a property with public getter and public setter. And now we want to add two methods, unenable and undisable. These methods are called automatically by the Unity editor. So private void unenable and undisable. Inside unenable, we want to write controller dot players, which is the list of players that we have created inside this player controller script. We want to add an instance of player movement script to this players list. So add this and this refers to the current instance. On the other hand, in the undisable method, we want to remove the current instance from the list. So controller.players.remove this. And now we can move to player controller script. Inside this for each loop, we want to check if player and the player is the current player on which we are iterating from the list of all players. So if player.lockedFingerID is equal to null, this means that the player is not locked to any particular touch which is happening on the screen. And that's precisely why we've set the locked finger ID to be a nullable int. If this was just a regular int, the null check would not be possible. And if it's null, we wanna check if input.getTouch on the index of i, and when the touch face is equal to touchface.begin. The touchface.begin means that we have just tapped on the screen. And also, 
if player dot player collider overlaps with the touch so overlap point touch world position which is the touch position converted to world coordinates and if this is true we want to set the locked finger id so player dot locked finger id and it's going to be equal to the current touches finger id so input dot get touch on the index of i dot finger id and if the finger id is not null and the current touch on the index of i is equal to the finger id of the current player from the list of players we want to move the player to a new position so else if player dot locked finger id is equal to input dot get touch on the index of i dot finger id we want to move the player to a new position so player dot move to position and the position is going to be touch world pass and also if we have lifted the finger from the screen or if the touch just got cancelled by the system we want to set the locked finger id to be null again so if input dot get touch on the index of i dot face is equal to touch face dot end it or input dot get touch on the index of i again dot face is equal to touch face dot cancelled and if that is true we want to set player dot locked finger id to be equal to null this ensures that we can set the locked finger id to be equal to some other finger in the future because this part of the if statement is gonna be true the next time that this for each loop runs all right and now let's set everything up in the unity editor we want to drag the player controller script that we have just created to the scene manager game object right here now we want to select player blue and we want to set up the controller variable and we are just gonna drag the scene manager game object on top of it and we are gonna do the same for the player red and now when we launch the game we should be able to control both of the players at the same time and yeah we can definitely do that because the ai would just not move in this way so this can serve as a proof to you that i am not cheating in any way we are really controlling the players at the same time on the same device with two touches and i'm also gonna show you one awesome thing because we are adding and removing players from the players list in the player controller script in unenable and undisable methods of the player movement script right here we can change the player blue to be controlled by ai even at runtime so we are gonna disable player movement at runtime and we are also gonna enable ai script and now the player blue is automatically controlled by the AI and we are not getting any errors because everything was sorted by the onDisable method which made the player blue to be removed from the list of players. When we go to scene manager, player controller and we click on players, we can see that it has size of 1 and it contains only player red. But when we disable the AI script and enable the player movement script back again and we go to scene manager, player controller we can see that now it contains player red and player blue as well and we can again control both of the players which is totally amazing and that's it for this video in the next part we will make everything that we made in this tutorial fit together by making a main menu there we will be able to select whether we want to play with AI or local multiplayer and basically we are slowly but surely approaching the end of this series. But before the wrap up we will also publish this game on the Play Store. If you want to get the code written in this tutorial click on the link in the video description which is gonna take you to resocoder.com. If this video helped you and if you enjoyed it, give it a like and also share it. Subscribe to this channel if you wanna get notified about more videos like this and also hit the bell button. If you have anything to say, suggest or if you just wanna say hi, leave a comment. Follow me on social media and see you in the next video.